Hi, I'm Ingrid. And I'm Luke. And today we're gonna cover one of the oldest known but still very widely used manufacturing techniques, sheet metal fabrication. Sheet metal fabrication takes a variety of forms, plain flat sheets, embossed, etched, ribbed, corrugated, and perforated. It's ideal for making metal components and can support high volume commodity products as well as low volume, one of a kind applications like prototyping. Sheet metal uses span across many different industries, including transportation, aerospace, appliance manufacturing, consumer electronics, industrial furniture, machinery, and pretty much anything else you can think of if you didn't get that from that list. Sheet metal, as you might infer from its name, starts out as a flat metal sheet that can often be shaped in many different ways to meet a variety of requirements. Rather than starting with a block of material, much of which would be machined away and discarded, sheet metal allows you to buy and use only what you need, which means it could have a significantly lower material cost than other traditional manufacturing processes. The great thing about sheet metal fabrication is that you can do a lot with it. It can be cut, punched, stamped, sheared, formed, bent, and then some sheet metal parts that you may see in everyday life are gonna be with appliances like your stainless steel refrigerator or kitchen sinks. Hot forming involves bending, stretching, flattening, and physically modifying sheet metal at temperatures greater than 600 degrees. It can be used to shape material into multi-axis forms not made of flat planes, and it's most used to create items like body panels for cars, metal sinks, and aluminum soda cans. Cold forming, which is what we will mainly focus on today, is a fabrication technique used to shape metal materials at room temperature. Cutting, bending, and hemming are some of the processes used in cold forming. The first method of cold forming is called cutting. Cutting involves using sharp tools or blades to cut metal into specific shapes and sizes. While there are several different methods of sheet metal cutting, three of the most common cutting methods are punching, laser cutting, and photochemical machining. Punch pressing involves punching out holes, profiles, and form features such as ribs and embossments. Laser cutting uses a high intensity and pinpoint accurate CO2 or fiber laser to melt or more accurately vaporize the metal. Photochemical machining uses CAD generated stencils and controlled etching to leave a pattern that's chemically activated to remove unwanted material. Etching is prevalent on thin metal gauges where laser cutting can burn or deform the material. Bending is done in a press. The sheet metal is placed into a press break and massive weight called the punch bears down onto the metal, pressing it into a die to get the desired angle and radius. And lastly, hemming is a cold forming method used to roll the edge of a metal shape to provide a smoother, stronger edge. Hemming comes in different shapes and sizes such as open, close, teardrop, and rolled. Hems can serve as an aesthetic feature or provide operational functions like a door hinge holding a pin where the hinge rotates. Hardware can be inserted into sheet metal components and there are a variety of finishing options available to customize parts like brushing, plating, anodizing, powder coating, spray painting, silk screening. As you can tell, there's a lot of options to choose from. Um, the cosmetic finishes like these are often critical in sheet metal applications as well, since many of the sheet metal parts are gonna be visible to the eye, and in our world, also known as customer facing parts. So it's something that's really important with a lot of customers to make sure these parts are very aesthetic. Sheet metal can be made of steel, aluminum, copper, brass, tin, nickel, or titanium. A good thing to remember about this is that your application needs will dictate which material is the best fit. Some considerations are material thickness, weldability, corrosion resistance, strength, weight, and cost. Standard stainless steel materials generally offer good corrosion resistance, formability, and weldability. Cold rolled steel is used to smooth the finish of hot rolled steel and is best used for precise applications. When it comes to pre-plated steel, it's either gonna be hot dipped galvanized or galvanized steel, which is galvanized then annealed. Say that 10 times fast. <laughs> Luke, can you tell us a little bit more about anodizing and powder coating? I'll do my best. In sheet metal, anodizing is a very common coating aiming to improve longevity and durability of your parts. And there's different types of anodizing to choose from, whether it be hardness or the color options. Some of the more common color options are gonna be black and clear. 
As far as powder coating, it's an effective alternative or type of painting used to coat the sheet metal parts. Powder coating gives more choices to pick specific colors for customization and often provides an enhanced cosmetic finish and additional protection compared to the sheet metal finish when it's left bare. Like most other technologies today, sheet metal fabrication is evolving. The materials, equipment, and tooling have become more repeatable and precise than ever before. To learn more about sheet metal fabrication and to take full advantage of what sheet metal can do for you, check us out at protolabs.com.